<laughs> Thanks, Amish. Kick this pig. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Engineering the Markets. My name is Jared, and it's December 14th, 2021. So looking at our posture today, um, ultimately notes are going to be fairly similar to yesterday. We really haven't seen too much divergence from yesterday's discussion. So we'll kind of cover a little bit more about some price uh, activity yesterday along with the overall defensive posture of the market going into this week. Now, as we start off with our S&Ps, we note that the overall daily trading range continues to be in play. We saw a possible extension outside of this daily range starting to form on Friday session with somewhat elevated volume relative to the push into this resistance level. But ultimately, one of our key underlyings, Apple, started to sell from its high and some additional weakness across the broader market as a whole led the S&P to consolidate near this upper resistance point, at which time we need to simply be aware of some structure inside of this trading ETF. So. First and foremost, our daily high marked on my chart as 470.65. That is our highest daily print before any false extensions that occurred prior to the correction. Just noting that we do have higher highs in the S&P, but all of these higher highs did not have subs uh, subsequent higher closes. So that highest print on the highest close inside of the transition into the highs is where I'm marking the daily range at this time. Now, you can see that we actually did have some pre-market trading activity above our trading range, kind of giving us the sense that maybe this trading range was about to break out. But as we've seen, this is a challenging area for the market. The NASDAQ as well, seeing lots of resistance at the 400 print. So we did pull back into this range and ultimately even came down to test our bull flag low, i.e. sort of our consolidative low before the range breakout attempt. So market certainly doesn't appear to have the sort of conviction to make new all time highs at this point. And as we are just sort of waiting for additional information inside of the FOMC discussions this week, we are looking for the market to give us clarity in different areas. And these areas are either bullish or bearish in regards to their directional bias, along with a assertion by the market that this is where money is starting to flow. We noted some defensive uh, sectors on yesterday's session, the likes of consumer staple, yeah, excuse me, Consumer staples probably being the most evident as this ETF is starting to break to new all-time highs. And we're seeing lots of continuation inside of names that have already been trending in this particular environment. Utilities as well, sort of an indication that the market may want some higher yield inside of its uh, portfolio. Uh, we're also seeing that the bond market volatility and utilities often trade like the bond market, uh, that volatility has been in the short term highly affected by different monetary policy adjustments, 
along with some of the continual search for low risk yield inside of longer term uh, bond structures. So as this yield curve and the overall assertion of interest inside of the bond market continues to be one of criticism, uh, utilities more on the equity side and deriving similar yield output uh, in regards to just annual yield. This is an area of interest for the market and continues to be sort of a defensive signal that yes, equities are still being bought, but only in defensive sectors. Real estate, once again, another sort of inflationary type sector in regards to if you have inflation hitting your economy, real estate is often inflated in tandem with that increase. So it, it often provides sort of the correlated asset to inflationary pressures. And then there was one more, if I could remember it. <laughs> uh, but we'll just stop, we'll stop with these three for now. Um, you counter that with some of the weakness we've been seeing from the highs, the likes of some of our key leaders, consumer discretionaries, seeing continual selling pressure on yesterday's session. Lots of weakness in the key names, but maybe a bit of a mixed bag overall. If you look at the actual composition of this particular ETF, you'll note that the highest weightings are the two large market cap names, Amazon and Tesla. But then you just circle into maybe the three, four, and fifth slot. And you'll note that stocks like HD have made new all-time highs as of late and are simply trending inside of the daily. You'll look at stocks like Nike, which have pulled back to the 50 and are seeing some possible buying interest on yesterday's session. Might be a key stock to watch in regards to some shining areas of strength in an overall sector that is being drawn down by higher market cap names. And then McDonald's, which not only made new all-time highs, not necessarily closing at them, bit of a weak sign near the highs with the inverted pin bar, but you can see that these were areas of interest prior and you counter that with stocks like Tesla, which have been struggling to sort of gain its foothold near the highs, along with Amazon, which not only sold during the most recent correction in the market, but also has a more defensive posture, i.e. it didn't have the same recovery as the overall NASDAQ or SPY. And seeing that defensive nature may lead to further downside if the market goes into another sell-off. So some other key names that just affected yesterday's session. We noted that technology did make a new all-time high on Friday. And coming into Monday, we were certainly looking for stocks like Apple to have sort of that bullish thrust and that continuation play. But we all know that Apple is extended from a technical sense. Extended being simply a condition, not necessarily a sell signal or even a short indication. Depending on your risk tolerance, you're stepping into extended stocks, often looking for larger term pullbacks. And just noting some of the dynamics inside of Apple, the likes of the option market being a key driver on Friday's breakout. And even on yesterday's session, you could see that there was a bit of retail activity sort of piling into the weakness of Apple itself. This is evident on the put side where put contracts traded at the ask or above is indicative of retail simply buying at the highest price of the market, looking for the market to continue further. They're not necessarily looking for hedges at that time albeit they are chasing downside momentum. So while this stock still has that bullish skew inside of its option market, the overall posture and the technical side, along with the fact that these overextensions often are indicative of buying climaxes, these are stocks to sort of keep on watch. If they can make new highs, that certainly can invalidate this thesis. But if it is at an extended period, 
and noting that larger buying points are not occurring near highs, then ultimately that pullback may be upon us. And what we need to be wary of is how deep can that pullback go after such an incredible upside run. Really nothing to say about Microsoft, <laughs> so shifting gears. But just looking at this overall sector view, and we can sort of boil it down into something like a heat map, there is weakness in this market in regards to sector performance. Um, you look across other key sectors like financials and energy, and you'll note that yesterday was another sort of weaker session for them. Now, these sectors are not necessarily selling off precipitously, but you'll notice looking at their different ETFs or different key names that they're directionally sort of neutral. They don't have a bias in one way or the other. And if you pull up something like volume profile, you'll also note that they're sort of stuck at different value zones. Whereas our overextended names, some of our sort of key leaders in the bullish thrust, those are names that are starting to ultimately come back down to possible buying zones, along with um, different sectors just leading the charge as of late. And I finally remembered my last sector. Um, this is a uh, healthcare is a sector where depending on the type of company and on the overall exposure um, in the midst of inflation, different healthcare names can actually raise prices or just raise prices of their services in order to counter some of the inflationary pressures that may face its earnings growth or its profitability as a company. And while this isn't necessarily the most defensive of sectors overall, seeing multiple strong buying um, events in all of these defensive names is indicative that the market is trying to be a bit more protective at this time. Now, as we all know, you can have moments in time where this certainly looks to be the case. The market gets new information, perception changes, and that shift can occur quite violently, basically leaving defensive, going more risk on, leaving tech, going more sort of um, risk off or sorry, risk on in regards to, to financials or energy, um, shifting away from equities and going into bonds, looking at different asset products like commodities, which we haven't discussed in quite a while. And just seeing those shifts and seeing them early is what makes us as technical analysts, some of the early adopters of key, uh, I would say movements in the market. So, when looking for opportunity, I would say that most areas of the market are postured defensively with some of them not necessarily biased in a direction. Market seems to be waiting for additional information and whatever approach the market takes once that information is attained, we may want to respect it for a period of time, i.e if we get large moves away from value zones where the market has been more consolidative, we may simply want to look at that as the beginning of a larger directional move. And this has certainly been the case for our defensive names. The question is, are we gonna see that shift again in the next couple of days with the FOMC uh, meetings? So, <clears throat> to keep some of that sort of front and center. Um, let's see, I don't have the dates in front of me on Tuesday, but I do have them for Wednesday. We're looking at approximately two Eastern time on Wednesday for the FOMC and then 2.30 for the Fed chair press conference. Uh, as we always sort of advise and warn against, if you are day trading or simply stepping into risk positions during this event, you may ultimately see some whipsaw. Market might have some short-term volatility. And then the rest of the session, once the information is disseminated, that information can lead to some decent trends once you know where the market is focused on the rest of the afternoon. So <clears throat> just kind of looking at the time here. Um, 
ultimately, there isn't too much additional that I have to present. Um, we are sort of in that awaiting phase and therefore the market is giving us less sort of clear information to ascertain. Um, we can shift through some of our risk factors. Just note that the dollar still remains elevated, but is becoming compressed. And what I like to see is that ultimately some of my levels that have been drawn for a while, these are levels back in previous inflection points, they are acting as areas of compression. And that's usually the idea behind levels. You really don't know how they're going to respond on retests until you actually get there. But this compression can ultimately break bullish or bearish with the understanding that the dollar is still in a very strong daily and weekly uptrend. The only thing sort of indicative of a possible breakdown is if we lose this sort of rising channel trend that broke bullish, along with seeing this compression break down in the form of some sort of slanted head and shoulders. But dollar sort of elevation has kept the market a bit wary of certain um, asset classes. Bond volatility continues to be something of interest, but as you can see, these range highs and range lows in the TLT are still somewhat relevant and in play. Um, more notably, the idea of that gravity spot, which most people will just sort of assess as a bit of a value zone. These are price levels that the market often checks back to and you can get a lot of chop or just lack of directional bias when you get to these areas. So just like any other range bound market, the best risk to reward tends to be close to your range low. Ultimately, you have to be afraid of range breakdown. So reclaiming the range or simply uh, looking below the range and coming back above that can set up sort of your long bias trades your extensions above range highs. Once again, that false breakout look that certainly occurred in TLT last week, as we saw a full range transition from low to high, that usually can set the stage for the pullback. And if that pullback hits value, that's your first target. So it's, it's more of a trading vehicle approach here, not necessarily commenting on bond volatility as of late, but just um, just to be aware that this has been short term, a bit of a driver in certain areas of the equities market. Um, these inflections inside of um, 10 year interest rates, the flattening of certain shorter term interest rates starting to come closer and closer to these inflection points. And then as we've discussed the sort of inversion that's occurring in the 20 and 30 year bond, uh, bond notes is indicative that there is some buying out in time. And there is a bit of a concern about the inflation that we're seeing across the economy. So let's see. I think overall, that's pretty much all I have. So we'll just sort of uh, clarify a few more things. NASDAQ coming off of 400 on yesterday's session, seeing a lot of resistance at this price level. Clear buy off the 50 so far, but we are seeing a lack of follow through in the short term as we are getting into that defensive nature. Just watching this overall trend line. This is probably the area to beat for this market if we want to continue being bullish in the NASDAQ. And IWM, as I mentioned um, a bit earlier, IWM still trapped within its trading range. Some gap structure above that did provide a rejection point on the most recent bounce. Also worth mentioning that if you just look at these different ETFs, Knowing that one particular ETF is showing weakness, one ETF is showing relative strength, but still hasn't broken its range high. And then the NASDAQ sort of caught somewhere in between. These are indicative of where money flow is kind of being forced across the market. So these 
signs and signals. They're short term, but if we see further downside or if we see the market correct once again, just know that areas of weakness will likely continue to be weak. They'll get weaker. Areas of strength will either be more resilient or start to see that distributive nature form in its chart. I'm really seeing some of that form in semiconductors past couple of sessions. We need to watch these key names and understand the type of market cap that's being thrown around in these names. They're struggling near the highs. And that's indicative that smarter money is probably starting the profit take. We need to be aware of this and aware of that downside risk as ultimately as traders, we want to be buyers when the move is beginning, buyers when the move is beginning. And sellers when the move is starting to end somewhere here, somewhere here avoiding this, avoiding the downside risk, because once smart money is out, they have to come back for it to get bullish again. They often don't want to come back until you get to lower support zones. That's just the cycle of most markets. So being aware of that volatility risk, being aware of the market cap being adjusted throughout these key names, the likes of Apple, one of the more important ones, as we almost held a $3 trillion market cap on yesterday's session. That was not sustainable for the short term. So we did see a correction on yesterday's session. And then even stocks like Tesla, which we've talked about how the volatility here is a, um, a bit of a risk for the market. This volatility is more about how fast Tesla moves intraday versus the type of risk of the particular company or just the, um, the assessment of whether it's still bullish or bearish. The idea here is that if a stock like Tesla with a roughly a billion or sorry, a trillion dollar market cap, um, if a stock like that can move approximately 5% every session, then understand it can basically gain or lose about 50 billion in market cap every single session. Most of our key underlyings do not move that volatile or that, that, uh, that fast. And when everything is in alignment with large market cap names like this, you can get some of the stronger selling that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks. So, it's not an assessment of downside risk. It's more an assessment of volatility risk. These companies that move as quickly as they're moving because a lot of their volume is driven by the option market, that volatility can easily sort of uh, transpire into larger sell-offs in the S&Ps, the NASDAQ, along with some of that correlated selling just hitting other underlyings as things have to be somewhat uh, market cap weighted in different ETFs. You have to rebalance things as you get larger selling in key underlines. So it's a overview of what's uh, likely to come. We, um, we are still not quite out of the woods yet in regards to uh, forward looking risk. And my sort of last note for everyone out there is if the last couple of weeks have been somewhat uncomfortable for your long term, your long biased or just your portfolio allocation. Consider the recovery that we've had as an opportunity to reassess. Um, markets don't always give you a second chance, but in the case of the most recent recovery, it has been quite fast. Um, we've seen dramatic <clears throat> downside in volatility products. And if that is something that you say, never again, I would not like to experience that pain a second time, look at your portfolio and see how you can improve. Um, one of the easiest ways to just reduce risk is to get some cash, basically to look at what areas are you ready to profit take. Um, a lot of traders have been in very profitable positions for a long period of time. It's been a very bullish market overall. 
But as with anything, you get these higher volatilities near the highs and things start to become a little shaky. So understand that cash is still a position. It's an opportunity to unwind certain parts of your portfolio. And then if you're not willing to do that, look at hedges, look at ways to get some downside exposure along with just sort of reducing your overall net Delta positive portfolio, especially in areas of the market that are showing some weakness. Uh, for example, one of our uh, newsletters that goes out discuss the idea of having not only a bit of a balanced portfolio at this time, more or less a Delta neutral style portfolio, but actually having some long exposure in those more defensive sectors. That way, if this does continue, you're going to have some key names, some key underlying starting to outperform with your long exposure and some of your long exposure in more risk on assets are going to be protected or you're going to be outside of the market itself. Sorry, wrong, uh, wrong underlines. So, I mean, however that looks depends on which names you're willing to step into at this time and sort of the assessment of risk. But these are ways to protect against volatility. You either need to go long that volatility exposure when it's present, or you need to assess where your volatility risk is and reduce that risk in some way. Otherwise, the pain that was experienced last couple of weeks might come back again. We might simply be seeing some of the highs in the market for a period of time. It's kind of hard to ascertain that at the moment, but just like with every major correction, we need to basically see, you know, is that it? Is, is that sort of the end of the run? And if it is, what does our portfolio look like moving forward? So markets obviously are moving in very structured waves. I, I don't necessarily want to call the end of the bull run on this podcast, but, um, or this, this, uh, this show, but just know that these corrections here, they occur quickly. The volatility exposure goes up very fast. So it's better to be hedged early than to need a hedge near the bottom. And then finally, knowing what areas of the market are starting to unwind a little bit. It may be worthwhile just reducing that risk for the moment, allowing things to sort of correct back into their normal buying zones and then stepping back in if the market sort of gives the all clear we can look to sort of rebuy those same underlyings those same risk on assets and then use that pullback as better risk to reward it's the cyclical nature of being traders understand that that back and forth happens all the time it's just whether you can survive between in between so with that said my name is jared this is engineering the market going to call it a few minutes early today and ultimately I'll continue to trade safe out there. Um, bit of a lackluster gappers list today. Just know that we're still probably awaiting a lot of information as the market sort of pauses, but we did get some gap downs uh, after hours. So those names are going to be interesting. Gap downs are always fun to sort of assess whether it's coming into support or looking at a breakdown that's going to have continuation. So We'll see how fun that looks today. We'll talk more tomorrow and stay tuned for pre-market prep.
Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey, good morning, Thor. Hey, good morning, everybody out there in uh, BBT land, YouTube land. Good morning, everybody. A little bit of a smoother start this morning uh, than, than yesterday already for me, so pretty excited about that. Um, how, how's your morning going? Uh, how'd your day end up yesterday, Norm? Uh, it was fine, man. I, a little bit under the weather and really was busy with things other than trading, so we'll see how today goes. Right on. Yeah, I can, I can certainly appreciate that. Um, we ended up having a pretty interesting day yesterday. Um, for anyone who is telling today, we, we find ourselves with a pretty decent gap down list, gap up list, um, pretty small. And I'm kind of with Jared, you know, maybe we'll find some interesting stuff in here. Some names that, you know, innately pop off, like right in, right as I'm looking, you know, you can immediately see like Elsid, um, Affirm, Neo, Xpev, Tesla, AMC. Lots of names that we're, we're pretty comfortable with trading on a pretty regular basis. So it should be pretty fun uh, to see how that plays out. Now, one thing we were talking about yesterday, if you guys were here for the pre-market show yesterday, despite the chaos, one thing we did identify was that we, we thought the SPY was in a really interesting range. And we were kind of calling for it to sell yesterday as an inside day and kind of sell off a little bit. Um, especially with kind of it's extended near like this, uh, you know, higher value area here. You can see my VPOC, which is this yellow line, which is my value assessment, was holding right here. So we kind of just found ourselves sitting at value for the past few days. Yesterday, big red candle. Today, gapping down away from value a bit. So it should be really interesting to see how the SPY does here, especially if it loses R4, which is a, a level that we often in the pivot trading use for extreme reversals. So it'll be interesting um, to see how, how this thing goes overall for sure. So, um, anything out there jumping out for you, Norm, that you think is looking particularly interesting already this morning? Uh, I'm not ready to get that far yet, man. I, yeah. I'll, I'll throw Good it back night. out in half an hour. -ish. Yeah, right on. All right, cool. Well, let's, um, I'll go ahead and uh, start getting into the, um, you know, the gappers a little bit. We'll start hitting a couple of these early ones and then we'll pop over for some community announcements since we didn't get to do those yesterday. I figure we could throw those in today in a little bit after I run through these. All right, so let's go first here. Um, let's go ahead and get over to here. So many screens, so little time. There we go. All right, so as you guys can see here, um, I'm going to start off looking at the SPY like we were talking about before. Obviously, on the daily, we were talking about that it's dropping off here. I got a 15-minute we'll update. We we did Thor. We did get PPI numbers that came out right when uh, we cranked up the show at eight thirty Eastern, mm. but a hotter than expected. Um, that's taken a toll. You can okay. see on the five minute. We just started dropping that last five minute bar. So yeah, there we go. Because I was just so, about to mention, it did look like we just started to we got, had some volume come in for sure. So it'll be what was the um, well? I'll let you digest the the numbers, and then when we uh, uh, when we just, hit back a little bit. The absolute numbers are kind of unimportant, just that they came in hotter than expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what's going on. It's confusing. My, my video is delayed by an extreme amount, like minutes that you have broadcasting. So I don't know exactly what's going on there, but I apologize for the weirdness. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a ventriloquist. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know why that would be happening. Um, I'm just broadcasting. Well, we can figure it out. Yeah. We can figure it out figure for it out tomorrow, maybe. Time. Um, yeah, I don't even look at the screens. I, I just look at my stuff while I'm doing it. Um, so, all right, cool. So we got some numbers coming in hotter than usual. Um, yesterday, we were focused in on some stocks like um, LCID, Intel, um, Apple. Um, Apple actually ended up having a really hard sell day uh, yesterday that a lot of us took advantage of. I, I got a really nice short on Apple yesterday and as you can see apple had a really big um sell down um i actually only got about half the move but it was it was enough um amd starting to look so what i noticed around tech sector and you know we were talking about that yesterday i wanted to see if we were going to start to see any weakness in it and certainly now especially with the spy gapping down we're seeing a lot of that so over into our gappers, the, the gap up should be pretty easy to get through because um there's not a lot of them um, I find MT um, is um, Arcelor Mittal, New York. Never heard of them. Um, low volume. Um, they are certainly gapped up a bit, yeah. but super low volume. Um, I saw Mittal. It's a uh, mining 
company, mm. steel miner, uh, AA, Alcoa. The other gap up is aluminum. Um, okay. So. So sector related kind of gapping there. Both well, of them, AA's uh, got other news. Uh, I believe they're being added to an index, uh, S and P mid cap 400. So that might be part of it because there might be uh, mutual funds and stuff that are required to buy because of that. Hmm. Uh, okay. But yeah, they're That's both metals. Right? Neither one of them. I, yeah. AA can trade okay at times. MT is is based out of Luxembourg and usually trades like garbage. Okay. Well, we'll leave AA on there in case we end up not having something else. But from the look of this gap down list, I think we're going to have some other opportunities. <laughs> um, let's hit a um, Adagio Therapeutics. I love the name. Um, really gap down. Looks like not a great thing. Big inverse hammer under S4 on the daily. So this looks really, really weak today. Um, Float in the 40 mil category. So, you know, it could be... Could be less. Um, a little high, you know, a little high on the float for us, Norm. Uh, but uh, not not bad. <laughs> Anything notable there? Uh, they have some COVID treatment info out, but I'm not. I'm not. Seems not getting the dots either. together as why they're seventy percent down. But I'm running behind, and I haven't been able to dig in as much as I usually would. So no worries. Um, I think somebody, I guarantee you somebody else out there will have a better idea. Bad news for a, a DG. I feel sorry. Antibody less effective against. There you go. So yeah, that'll they do it. They have a therapeutic treatment that is found to be less effective. So no bueno. So, all right. So if, I mean, if this is your bag, this, this is certainly a catalyst that, um, you know, has already dropped this stock by two thirds of its price or something just in the past like day but i mean you, you're talking this thing's you know been like upwards of 60 bucks now down to 10 bucks that really hurts so if this is your bag might provide an interesting opportunity um a little low on the float side for me but you know to each um pl planet labs um also gapping down um significantly um volume not really there now that it has gapped down um but looks Looks like it had some news back in November that had it rally and, and get a little crazy. But other than that, I don't know. This one doesn't look too great to me. Anything it earnings more? last night. Earnings. But I agree. I, I This is a uh, ticker that doesn't trade a whole lot. Um, it's only traded 124,000 shares today, which, frankly, in today's uh, trading universe is not very much. But uh, they had earnings last night. I don't know that it'll be very good as we get into the day. Right on. Um, we have a popular ticker here, and it does have some order flow this morning, which is AMC. Um, one thing that jumps out right off the basis for me on AMC looking at the chart, and I'll probably be watching AMC today now, so I already like this. Um, so you can see here we have kind of lower volume, and then we have this real high volume drop down towards, you know, it's 21, you know, 40 or something. I'll be very interested to see how AMC responds to this this higher volume area. This looks like something I could, you know, could work for me. We're really extended to the downside. So if we do get a bounce in the market today or we start to rally, maybe AMC provides us that. Is there any news on AMC that's helping it sell like this, Norm? It has been kind of like on a steady decline since like June. Oh, sorry, I was muting uh, while I coughed. I, I don't see anything this okay. specific this morning. Um, if somebody has something specific that's fresh, let me know. I mean, yeah, right it's on. just kind of had a little bit of that yesterday too. So Yeah, I had, this, had that hard. It'll be interesting to see what it does today. So we'll, we'll keep that on there. We'll look at that in a little bit. Um, FHTX. Foghorn Therapeutics. Man, I love these names this morning. This is great. Um, obviously, something happened yesterday catalyst-wise. Today, looking like a second day kind of event where we're now losing some of the gains from the prior day. Big jump, low float. Not going to be my bag. What we got going on with Foghorn? Anything worth putting yeah. into the low float? Well, category? Foghorn and Leghorn had their... Uh, I, I just... I can't help it. I just think of the cartoon character every time <laughs> I heard the, hear the name of this. Yeah, I love that. They had their big news with the partnership cancer uh, treatment with Eli Lilly that popped them yesterday. Now they're, you know, just selling off a little bit from that. Okay. So not bad. I mean... <laughs> 
floats, uh, you know, a little low for me. But if you're into the the lower float kind of stocks, I mean, this is, you know, it's a it's at 17 bucks right now. Um, I mean, really big gap yesterday. Maybe get a gap fill on this thing. Um, that that could certainly be interesting. Um, I do have shares for short on, you know, an IB on this one. So um, you never know. Could could end up being that. Throw that in the low float category if we're looking for a couple. Um, XP which the company is called XP. Do not like the order flow on this one at all. Um, anything notable on XP? If not, I'll move on. Oh, garbage. Moving on. Um, Golden Ocean. Wow. Um, really don't. So, guys, when we're talking about order flow that we don't like, right, th this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. See how when you're looking at it, you just see lots of little just dashes and stuff like that. This stock's just not fun. Now, the float's not horrible on on golden ocean uh, but i mean look at the daily chart on this thing look how we get gaps and then very narrow candles so this is a stock that does not trade well Garbage. right it moves almost after hours is when it makes its movements and then it spends its days chopping so it's a very easy way to just look at this without you don't even need to know the news you just know that this stock trades horribly just the name <laughs> yeah exactly all right a firm is a name we know um a firm, I don't like the pre-market on it at all, um, but I don't know if that's common for a firm these days. Um, looks like it's been trading pretty like tight and rangy during most of the days as well. So um, not sure if we have a specific catalyst on a firm, but we are you know making some continuous red candles here to the downside, um, starting to gap with the market. Uh, I mean, could provide some opportunities, but. Not the best one in there. Anything interesting there for you on our firm? I think there's some ETFs that are that have announced they're getting positions in this. This has oh, been on our gappers a lot recently. I haven't seen anything especially great on it. And I also want to give a shout out over to Harry. Thank you for the uh, super chat. I guess he's saying beyond partnership with McDonald's to launch like their food was mm. not it, like their food was not intolerable already. No joke. <laughs> I th I'm pretty sure that super chat was just to get Norm to respond to McDonald's yeah. and BYND. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, you know, um, just don't mess with the McRib. I mean, I I'm pretty sure that's not meat anyway. Oh. Um, but God, I love those things. I don't know why. They're oh. so good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So Affirm, we'll, we'll throw that on the list. Neo, um, Neo on the gap down list. Neo was really interesting yesterday, was very indecisive. Um, if you can tell on the daily chart, we actually almost had a black candle yesterday. The, the open price and the closing price were so close to each other. So today, Neo finds itself below that. Calling this a gap down, I think, is a very generous use of the word. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll take it. Um, the thing I would be looking for on Neo, especially since we're already down to S4 is I'd actually look for Neo to rally back towards the previous daily levels first and then sell. So we got to keep an eye on that. Don't get too excited on Neo cause this one's already in a range where you can get squeezed easy. Any, any news on Neo that's causing this bad boy to, to sell today? Uh, potential delisting of Chinese stocks. That's oh, really, yeah. um, but it's nothing specific to this morning. That's an underlying thing that I uh, hit them has hit them recently. Is that kind of like what's going on with like XPEV and stuff like that too? Is that all kind of like the same deal? Yeah. Or, yeah. So XPEV kind of similar to Neo and, and probably due to a similar catalyst, XPEV find itself, um, you know, actually trying to come back towards VWAP on the daily and that's very interesting um you know the stock was really in a good position and really moving well trying to get away from the average price for 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 a bit you know over a month uh but finally gave up in uh december with all of this delisting news i think really got this kicking um and it you know kind of made everyone reevaluate their, their their concept of what this bad boy's worth and, and sure enough been selling back bounced just shy of vwap now moving back towards it, notice that bounce at VWAP came on very little value on um, volume. So we did we we had some short covers basically there, but not a lot of bulls bought in off of that bounce, which that is not a good sign. So we could definitely look for XPEV and Neo. XPEV also has a very bearish level two setup right now. Lots of liquidity to the downside, so the short sellers are in control of this one. 
So we're going to have to, uh, might be some good opportunities there. Um, Roblox, um, Roblox volume low in the morning. Um, looks like, um, we're sitting at S3, um, potential buying zone, but if this thing makes a new critical low, we could, we could move back towards $90 or a hundred dollars on this one as well. Anything interesting on, on Roblox? I mean, I, I like the daily on it, but all right, let's see. All right. I already did XPEV. Neo, where did it go? Elsa, it's running away on me. Gotcha. All right. Elsid on the chart. Um, Elsid looking pretty weak in the level two as well, um, but finds itself really low in its range. So that we'll have to wait for Elsid um, to set up a little bit better. At least for me, you need it, I'd need it to like sell or squeeze a little bit before I could get in. But big red candle a few days ago. We've had a couple of uh, pullback candles that stayed red, and they were on you know kind of like retracement level volume. So we could look for a low here. So careful on that, guys. But uh, Elsid may want to sell today as well. Man, the delisting stuff's really hitting a lot of these, huh? Yeah, it's an ugly morning. It's getting uglier. Wow, look at this. It's getting we're we're gapping as we speak because my list is getting bigger and bigger. Yep. Baba just jumped on. Um, C, uh, cruise lines are hitting. Tech's starting to hit. Pitons on. This is this is getting to be a very big list. Everybody on the gap downside. So keep that in mind. Um, we may uh, we'll we'll do a few more of these, and then what we'll do is we'll bust over to community announcements. I'll let Norm knock that out, and then I can just go heavy into the list until like ten minutes before the open. Try and get through some of these and find the good ones. Uh, a lot of these are just going to gap with the market, so it's going to make it really difficult to trade, right? Because you're going to want you know you're going to make assumptions, but then they're going to end up gapping down and chopping, which is going to be really annoying. So, um, all right, let's what who jumped out at me? Uh, we got plug jumped out at me or Nvidia. Here it is. All right, NVIDIA, which this one was already getting called out in YouTube and in the chat room today as an interest. Um, NVIDIA has been on a straight sell in the pre-market, and NVIDIA has been selling pretty hard for a while. See, notice when I talked about that bounce, that candle that didn't come with very much volume. See what I mean? Same thing here. It, it did bounce, but you didn't get a lot of volume there, so you got one more up, and now we're selling back down. Kind of the same kind of profile NVIDIA has now. We're at a really critical level on NVIDIA, though. If, if we drop too much lower, um, you know, I got my S4 here. If we move too much lower below 270, what we got this big buy-up candle here back at, like, 270, 271, we could definitely see some real selling occurs, profit-taking comes in, or stop-outs from that big order. Um, let's see here. What else? We'll do one more, and then we'll pop community announcements. Let's hit Piton. So Piton... Um, had a really rough day yesterday, but it looks like it bought up most of it. It was, there was like a, did you hear that, Norm? It was like the, uh, uh, some, like a soap opera or a general hospital kind of a show. I forget which show it was. Ended up, Sex in the City? So, yeah, Sex in the City ended up, yeah, Sex in the City got rid of a major cast member and they did it on a piton. <laughs> well, he had a heart attack after working out on one and the piton <laughs> made a commercial out of it. So, so I mean, you know, um, yeah. It, not bad. So did it. So looking at the one minute chart, was the commercial a failure or a success? Because I mean, kind of closed up high. But anyway, um, selling off a little bit this morning. So we're gonna go the other direction with it. But Teton should be an interesting play. I'm not sure what kind of catalyst bad commercial equals, um, but it's interesting. So why not, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean they. Their their drop is on much bigger news uh, than than just a cast member on Sex and the City dying. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> they've they've got a lot going on. So, so cool. Well, let's hit this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and roll us over to some community announcements. Um, and we'll and we'll get that knocked out, and then uh, we'll we'll get back over to this massively building gap down list we have over here. Um, all yours, brother. All right. Uh, I'll do this real quick since we did not do the weekly rundown yesterday. Just a reminder, on Mondays, we've got the uh, swing trade with Brian at 2.30 in the room and then tech and onboarding on Monday nights. You've got trade reviews with Eamon at noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's done in the classroom. And then success webinars Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, usually. Psychology, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday. 
And then Mentoring Thursday, you've got 11 a.m. with Andrew, uh, the after hours and um, earnings mentorship uh, with Ed at 4.30. That is uh, pre predominantly during earnings season when he'll go over earnings trades. And then uh, Thor's mentorship, 8 p.m. Eastern on Thursday as well. And then Crypto, 11 a.m. with Jared on Friday. All right, tonight. 8 p.m. Eastern, you've got Jared talking about gap trading. And uh, next week is Amen special time, Tuesday, 5 p.m. for the success webinar about trend trading. You've got a double dose of Creta. This uh, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, you're going to talk about, she's going to be talking about building resilience, how to bounce back quickly from mistakes and losses in your trading. And then next week, 5 p.m. Eastern, she's going to be talking about taking the pain out of trading part two assessing impact fomo and over trading so take a look at those need that class yes you can uh, put in put on a reminder in your outlook calendar for it make sure you don't miss it it's a reminder shriners children's hospital is the uh, charity of the month for any super chat or super sticker revenue that we're going to match dollar for dollar and lab, oh, stock trading simulator. If you're looking for a great uh, way to learn and uh, in your free time, you can use our free web-based uh, stock trading replay application. Just go to stocktradingsimulator.com. Be sure to sign up in the bottom right-hand corner where that arrow is. Put your email in and you'll get uh, uh, homework assignments from Simon and Eamon twice a week. Um, tickers and times to go look at things and uh, so you can train. If you're watching on YouTube, haven't been in the chat, you can use the promo code PREMARKET24 to get a uh, uh, discount on the test drive. Just go to the homepage, bearabletraders.com, scroll about halfway down the page. You'll see that test drive now button. Click that, fill it out, put in the promo code PREMARKET24. It is not recurring. It only bills you once. That $24, it lasts seven days, five calendar days. Excuse me, seven calendar days, five trading days, and then it cancels, gives you access to the onboarding classes each and every Monday night as well. And then uh, if you're like looking to become an elite member, you can use the promo code HOLIDAYS40 to get 40% off the annual elite membership and a month of free DAS simulator as well. So. Hey, thanks, Norm, for going through all of that for us, man. We're, we're getting some slides in there for you. That's, that's turning into quite the event to get through, <laughs> yeah, to get through all of that. But I mean, some great stuff, and there are so many great like classes. I, I I actually tried that free stock trading simulator out um the other day, and it's pretty stinking cool. I I really wish that thing was there when I first started, um looking into you know figuring this whole thing out. That'd have been really helpful. All right, people. So let's let's get over back over to this gappers list that we've got going on um we've got quite a few on here as we know we're, we're starting to have um i've noticed that we've got um, some stocks like uh plug power has has jumped into here and uh, also some travel sector stuff on here so i'm going to try and hit through some of these the question is going to be and this is the the i'm just going to go ahead and notate a few of these because i know there's some i'm going to want to really look at the question is which ones do we trade right we've got so many stocks now Right, so many different tickers that are going to potentially offer opportunities. How do we get a primary watch list that only has one or two tickers in it that we can actually focus on, right? And and not just completely like lose ourselves with all of these different stocks to look at, right? I mean, look at that. I just did a quick rundown and just picked stocks that hit like some decent float requirements. Um, I, I don't think we're going to need AA today. Um, so, and look at that. We've already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 4. I mean, we got like 15 stocks here, right? So, what do you say, Jad? I'm with you. Apple, done, right? No. Um, so let's hit a few of these and see if there's anything notable um, news-wise that you guys think differentiates these. That would be something to look for, right? Is there something that pops out as the stock is selling with the market? Sure, but does it have some kind of notable, you know, catalyst that's going to let it stand out from the others? So, for instance, space here. Really don't like space in the pre-market. 
daily chart has not looked very good um, for a while. Um, I also do not like that we're opening. So for me, I use pivot ranges to help me assess um, whether or not I think they're in good tradable ranges. So what I can see here is that we're actually kind of in this middle range. So I, I need space to sell off down through S3 before I could really evaluate that. So I can move away. I can move space instantly to a secondary just because of that for now. Um, Baba. Baba is in a very nice range for me. Baba gapping down, sitting right at S4, which means I can look at it for a breakdown or a reversal, which I really like that. Baba at value here, big buy up area here. If the market starts to sell, could provide some opportunities. I like Baba. Um, AMD, similar posture. AMC had a hard sell, or AMD had a hard sell yesterday. Today finds itself already down at the bottom of this selling range. So the question will be, if the market bounces, can I get AMD to bounce with it and give me an opportunity for a long here? So maybe look for AMD. So AMD looks like a possible um tlry i don't normally don't like tlry a whole bunch um i don't like the pre-market volume as much so i'm going to pull that one if you end up wanting levels on that let me know and i'll go through tesla man here's the stock that is really seeing a difference huh so here's a stock thir you know twelve hundred dollars you know only a month or two ago today under a thousand again Notice we have this really big value area that's set up just above a thousand. Now we find ourselves under that. Very interesting. One thing I do not like is we're in the central range, so we could give ourselves. This is going to could potentially be a choppy stock, especially with the market already selling. This stock may chop for a bit and then rally when everything else sells. Could sell, but because of its range area, I'm going to expect it to kind of gravitate back to value here. So I I might not look at Tesla today. I'll put that on a secondary just to make it a little easier. CCL um, sitting at S3, drawing down a little bit. One thing I don't like about CCL lately, and this is something to note, um, CCL um, has been putting in these really small candles lately. Very, very tight, narrow candles, which means the price hasn't been moving a lot. Today, even with the gap, still very, very small range. And that's not good. You know, every now and again, you're getting a day like where you kind of get a decent move. But on most days, you're only getting like 50 cents to a dollar moves on CCL, which is the reason why I haven't been trading it very much lately. Unfortunately, I traded it a lot back here on these days, right, where the average candle was significantly larger. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but right now, CCL not looking great. Um, NCLH kind of giving me the same feel. We'd need a real big volume spike to come in. I think travel selling down because of COVID and Omnicron, Omni News and stuff like that. But I, th I think we're kind of at value on, the tra on these travel stocks. So I really just don't think they're going to sell a lot more. So I I'm, I'm probably not going to watch these to sell, but maybe put them on a secondary if the market bounces. Maybe they provide an opportunity. Piton we already checked out. Um, all right, so um, let's, and then, oh yeah, okay, BYND. I'm going to grab a couple tickers from here and the room. Um, that will include BYND, Oxy out of YouTube. Um, let's see here, BYND. So BYND pre-market not looking fantastic, but that's not a surprise, right? BYND rarely looks good in the pre-market. Um, so we do know BYND has a, um, a McDonald's, deal right we were mentioning that before and some other things so we're gonna have to keep an eye on on BYND and maybe see what happens there um, let's see otherwise you know I'll be honest I don't see anything on the daily chart that really like excites me about BYND just yet so um, let me get my epic cuz I'm starting to get caught up now where did you go there you are all right, so what I what I'm looking for will that to be interesting on BYND will have to be something like pre market high, like breaking above, you know, sixty seven fifty or something around that area, because right now notice we've got these this kind of this line that forms across here, you know, this this kind of consistent area where we got sold down these three times, we broke through that, we rallied and lost it, we did get a little volume here, but not a ton. 
right? If one of these candles here or here had like a bunch of volume, then I would read this as maybe like an insider or somebody with some knowledge had bought in and they were poised and ready for a big long. But right now I'm not seeing that. So even with the news catalyst, I would actually expect BYND to consolidate and, and, and accumulate a little bit before it goes. So if it breaks a critical level, maybe we get enough shorts to start covering out and to, to allow that to happen. But right now, I don't see that. So right now for, BY, for BYND, I would expect moderate chop um, around this level. And then if you see a good ignition in volume, maybe then through VWAP, we, we get a nice long or something like that. But I probably wouldn't play it short just because I don't think it's going to go down very far if you do. Um, the long would be the play, but the question is, is that today at all? Does that even set up, right? Um, Oxy, um, Oxy just had some volume come in. We're sitting right next to, um, we're setting pre-market low here. We are moving away from previous day's close. Um, so, and we're setting kind of value down here. Um, the level two on Oxy is actually showing a lot of sellers to the top side. Um, so, um, I, I actually think, Oxy is likely to squeeze, at least in the pre-market for the short term. Now, what does it do overall? I'm not entirely sure. Um, one thing I do notice is we do have some aggressive buying that has happened near $28 quite a bit. So do we, you know, do we try and sell off a bit first or has there been enough buying that we just bounce right here? It, it could happen. Um, so yesterday, it sold a bit and then just ranged. Now it finds itself dropped down. So yeah, I mean, if it goes anywhere, it squeezes back up to like 29, 30 or something like that. So we'll keep an eye on Oxy for that maybe. Um, let's see, CCL. CCL is starting to stack to the top side. You are right about that. So, and see, and that's what I'm talking about, right? We find ourselves selling off and we're right at value, right? The problem with CCL, like I said, Look how small these candles are, right? I mean, they're really, really small candles. You got to think about your average, you know, trading range that you can actually get out of this thing. You know, now it is true you'll be able to run probably like a 10 cent risk on it because it moves slowly, right? So, and you can run a tighter risk on CCL. So you can maybe run a 10 cent risk, but so it's not that the big R's aren't available, but you got to nail it like right at the right opportunity. If this thing rallies, you know, to like 1820 or something like that, and then you try and get off, you know, get in up there, you're, you, you've already exhausted half your trading range, right? So it's going to be really hard to get a good RVR. So we just got to keep that in mind as you do it. Um, Docu, let's look. I'm just going to run levels and go through tickers. So if there's anything specific that you like or any specific news that you want, just go ahead and throw it out there. I'm going to do this for 10, 15 more minutes, whatever you guys want. And then uh, and then we'll, we'll drop off. I'm just happy that this thing's working right now. So um, uh, let's see, Docu. So Docu had that big gap and, um, back on the 3rd right this huge gap down that it did and when it did it hit like a rock right like it hit and it sold um i was actually trading in vancouver on this day um which was a lot of fun and and norm uh got like half of this move like in at, like right at the open and was done for the day and went and got everybody coffee and donuts and and uh, tim hortons uh because when you're done in five seconds why not go get everyone tim hortons Right, so because he's a baller, um, <laughs> we did have them, Jonathan. Um, if you've never had uh, those, you, you've you've really missed out in your life. <laughs> Ruthless. <laughs> oh, Jason. Hey, when 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 in Canada. When in Canada, right? It was actually the first time I had been to a Tim Hortons, but not bad. Uh, I had the little like an egg sandwich thing. It was pretty good. Eh. <laughs> so anyway, um, so Docu put in this really big volume right here on that day, and I really like that. So the question is, what now, right? Like Docu's been stuck with these narrow candles. I mean, this thing really doesn't seem like it wants to sell off. But and we have tapering volume here as well, so I'm just not sure what's going on with Docu right now. F full disclosure, 
right? I would I would have I would have a ton of trouble taking a good trade on on Docky right now, because I, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a candle like this, right? So it would just make it very very difficult. The problem is one day it's not going to be a candle like this, and it's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome, right? But I I don't know how to tell when that's going to happen. So the things I would be looking for. Um, just to, if you're going to pay attention to it, would look be looking for items like previous day's close, right? That that ten that seems to line up almost with the top of today's daily wick, right? So I'd be looking for that area right there near 140. If we can get up and rally through 140, move back into the body of this candle, that could be very interesting, right? We already have value down here, so maybe if we sell a little bit the open, we're already at S4, so we're kind of at breakdown or reversal territory. Right, so it's either going to break down or it's going to reverse. Here we're at, we're at a tight pivot spot, so the question will be, you know, do we hold here and, and, and move up back towards value? Maybe we pop up there. So if you're going to get in, I, I long, I'd try and get in as close to 136 or 135 as possible, because if you start getting in up here at 138.50, it's going to get sketchy. You're going to be in kind of like the gray area. You might want to wait for it to even break all the way out and just get all the way through 140 before you make a decision on it. Right now, I will throw out um, that the um, level two actually has some bullish orders down near 135, or sorry, bearish orders near 135, so I would keep out for that. Um, Microsoft, sure. And then I'll hit Hog out of the room, although Hog is uh, out of the YouTube, although Hog, not my favorite. So Microsoft is getting a is getting fairly high priced for me. One thing, if you zoom out on the daily, that you immediately noticed is that we've established this high value area at like three thirty four, three thirty five, right? Come to the one minute chart, three thirty five, right? We, so we're we're basically at value, right? Now being at value is one of the worst places you can take trades from. Right, because basically what we, what I believe at using you know market dynamics and stuff like that is that the stock price is basically going to move away from value and then come back to value and move away from value, and come back to value, away from value and back. So when you're at value, it gets really, really difficult to trade right at this area because the stock's gonna naturally wanna come back. So you keep getting stop outs over and over and over again because you're constantly getting in the stock. It moves away from value, but then it comes back and you get stopped out, right? And then it comes back, you get long again, it gets away, it comes back, and it stops out. And you get really frustrated, you stop trading it, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone, right? And that boom, it's gone is what we're trying to trade, right? So what I would do is I would, if it can lose S6 and break below pre-market low, I think that would be a good indication that Microsoft's going to sell more. But right now we're really extended lower in its range. So it may just chop here since we're so far extended in its normal range, right? It may just chop here and wait for SPY to bottom. And once SPY bottoms, right, then rally, right? So we'll have to keep an eye on Microsoft because it's going to naturally want to come back to value unless just something really, really changes. Because it's a, it's a fair stock. I mean, it's been trading in a very bullish posture for a while. So I'm, I'm not expecting it to just do some massive sell-off. Um, but... You know, we have to keep an eye on it. Also, keep in mind that Microsoft is over 50% held by institutions as well. So that means di institutions equal diamond hands, right? So, we, we you know, we're going to get less big sell-offs here because institutions are more likely to hold um, because they don't, you know, they're spending other people's money. They're not spending their money, right? You're paper-handed because you're spending your money. Um, LI just popped up, so I'm going to... I'm gonna, Fl uh, flip over and hit that real quick. Um, Li Auto can have fun at times. Uh, not huge fan of the daily. One thing I do like is that we're kind of sitting here, but we've had this big buy up. But I think we could sell down more back down to this lower level 28. Um, level two also looking fairly fairly bearish, so we'll have to keep that in mind. All right, so let's see here. All right. Um, so, what is S four J H in the uh, in YouTube? S four is a Camarilla pivot point. Um, we have a lot of material on them, both on the YouTube and in the chat room. If you're interested in learning more about them, um, you can uh, you can get the the free sesh to come over to the chat room, and you can actually ask us about. It. We'll tell you about them. If you want to just look on the YouTube, um, search um, those. You can see some of my videos. I've done a, I've done a few of them on them, so there should be some good stuff there. 
Um, all right, so let's go back up to AMC. We checked this one earlier. Um, AMC has just great price action right now. I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what AMC is going to do. It's very extended um, on the daily, getting all the way down to S6. So we would read this as a breakdown on the daily. As you can see, S4 we lost, and we've had this big breakdown on the daily. But we have a lot of volume coming in right now. Now, a lot of volume, most of you who do VPA would read that as, you know, getting ready to bounce or reverse because generically as you encounter a lot of volume, you're either getting a lot of short covering or you're getting a lot of buying coming in on a bullish posture. Either way, generically that creates a rally situation. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what AMC does in this area because we find ourselves, look, we're setting an isolated pivot right now um, on, on the one minute just at S3. So across through S3, could be a bullish move so it'd be very interesting to see what amc does overall but i i like amc i think it actually has the best order flow um in the morning and i love that it's back in my price range i i could not i don't like trading amc at 60 dollars. i love trading amc at 20 dollars. so the only thing we got to be careful with amc is its spread can get a little bit aggressive and it is on short selling restriction so we need to keep an eye on that um, to, you know, to be, to be, um, cautious. If you do decide to take a short on this thing, remember getting filled is going to be a little tricky. Um, so what else we got here? Um, so we've, we've gone through, we have a massive list here this morning, people. Um, me personally, I'm going to be focusing on, um, on, um, AMC. I really like AMC. I'm also going to be, um, focusing on let's see um i will be watching neo um i actually will likely be watching nvidia and apple so my 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 uh i'm gonna post my watch list in the room my watch list is going to be apple amc nvidia and neo for my primary Can you set a limit order on Sim? Yeah, you can, Walcott. All right. Um, so let's see what the other moderators are watching. Um, right now, I'm just going to read it out because I'm not as fancy as Carlos. Um, our, our, um, we're getting an early P where we have IPOs coming up, S-I-D-U and V-I-N-E, some SPACs, K-A-C-L-U. Um, Amen came in early today um, with Mara. Bank of America, B-A-C, so M-A-R-A-B-A-C, and Tesla, T-S-L-A. Um, Eamon's been really crushing some trades, and I, and I love how he's been isolating his watch list lately. Very cool stuff. Um, Mike B is going to be looking at Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple. Um, Peter is going to be watching Apple, A-M-D, L-C-I-D, um, a.k.a. The Huge um secondary to be determined um so and and peter's making a good point in his he says not loving anything at this time it looks like a wait and see morning now we have so many things gapping and moving around what wait and see what do you mean right well wait and see we have so many different things to look at right so it can be very easy um to get distracted on a day like this and and, and almost like just trade your day away before you even realize it because there's just so much in there uh, we have Dima coming in with Apple, AMD, and Plug. I do like Plug. I might have to throw that on there. Neo, NVIDIA, Apple, and Tesla are being watched by Tiffany. Already gave you mine. Jared coming in strong. Tesla, AMC, and he's watching the semis. And our good boss, Andrew, who has been out living, living the dream. Uh, AMD, AMC, Neo, and Tesla. He had a really awesome trading day yesterday. Unfortunately, wasn't able to do a recap because... He had just an internet, just enough internet to make money that day. So, um, and Brian Pezum's list just came in, and it is short everything. Um, so, um, that is our, our our list for the day coming out. I hope everybody um, has a great trading day today. Um, I think the the theme across the board, right, is that we're we're kind of expecting things to be a little wild in the morning. So, especially for your newer traders, we maybe we recommend. 
um, hanging back a little bit, not getting too aggressive at the open, you know, on a big gap down or on a gap down day like this, very easy for the market to chop, very easy for the market to squeeze, right? So we just can't make assumptions, let the market set up, let it find value and then make a move when that move happens. We'll have our opportunities. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming by the pre-market show. Um, if you haven't done already and you're so inclined, please throw us a like. We'd appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Hope everybody, again, has a great trading day. And as always, have a good one. Thanks.